Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Peace Through the Pandemic. I hope this finds you doing well and at peace because God is with you and he loves you more than you know. Today, we're going to talk about the purpose of life. And uh, may I ask you, uh, what are you here for? I consider some very common uh, pursuits when it comes to what we use our livelihood for. And I believe one of them is for self-fulfillment and happiness. I think of the American dream, you know, the pursuit of happiness. Um, and yet, have you ever done that? Have you ever had a weekend or a day where you just pursued yourself the whole time and maybe wound up with a little less money, maybe even feeling empty? Uh, in fact, there's a saying, you know, that he who dies with the most toys wins. Actually, he who dies with the most toys just dies and you never see a U-Haul following a hearse, uh, says Rick Ward. Um, what else could we do? We could live uh, to leave a legacy that people would remember who I am. Which, let me give you a test. Um, how many of the presidents of the United States of America could you name? I maybe have like five, maybe 10. <laughs> they were pretty big deals. How are their legacies going? Uh, so legacy is really hard. In fact, uh, think of it this way. Do you know who your great, great grandfather or grandmother was? Legacy is a really hard deal. Another thing that we could try to do, and, and this seems very good today, and, and I'm not against it, is to make the world a better place. And so you have organizations that try to cure, you know, a lot of our world problems, whether it be health problems or poverty, uh, whether it be making uh, drinking water available. All of those are really, really good. Uh, but a little bit of perspective, this world is always going to be broken. In fact, even Jesus says, the needy, the poor, you will always have among you. Um, not again saying we shouldn't help others, but is that our truest purpose? So as I've gone down a few, I wanted to share with you what Solomon's experience was. Solomon knew what pleasure was. He knew what legacy was. Um, we, we still know his name. Uh, he, he knew what it was to get stuff. And in Ecclesiastes 2, look what he records. He says, I thought in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is foolish. And what does pleasure accomplish? He goes on to say, I tried wine. And, and he says, I tried great projects. I had um, all these uh, accomplishments and all this possession. He, he tried romance and too many women. Um, he had legacy who is greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem, says uh, chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes. But his summary was this. Verse 11, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Laughter, legacy, projects, stuff, romance, everything was chasing after a rainbow and getting to the end of it and finding no pot of gold. Now, the key there was without God under the sun. And so we want to talk about, as Christians, what is our purpose? What did he make us for? Now, I love the simplicity of our God to us. Just as you can sum up all his commands in love, so we can sum up our purpose very, very simply. In fact, that's what Paul does in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And, and here is the purpose of a Christian. Uh, it says in verse 31, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. What are you here for? You are here to give God glory. And I suppose I could wrap it up and I say, hey, thanks for joining us and amen, and I hope that helps you. But I want to talk about this a little bit, of what it is to live for the glory of God. Now, what's really interesting for me as a pastor is many people, when it comes to their purpose, are hung up on what they should do. And it has been my huge privilege when people come in and they ask me what college they should go to. Or they ask me what house or city they should move to. Or they ask me what job should they take. And, and it's such a privilege to kind of navigate those decisions with people. Another one is who should I marry, right? You know, and, and, and so often we're hung up on, you know, what should I do? I'll never forget when I had a great professor in MLC called Daniel Deutschlander who talked to a bunch of college students about marriage. And he was trying to convince us that God can make a couple paths work. He was blowing up the soulmate theory, that you're just meant for one person. Which, by the way, if that theory was true, that we're only meant for one purpose, 
person. If one person gets it wrong, then we all got it wrong. <laughs> That's how hard that one is. And, and so what he convinced us is that a couple paths can work. They, they really can. Just make a choice and trust in God. Well, I think that has a lot to do with a lot of our purposes. God is less concerned about what you do and more concerned about why you do it. And when the why is right, the what works out. So, so what I mean to say is this, when you make a choice to give God glory by the job that you pick, and, and you're picking it because you think you can give God glory by that, that's a great choice. When you buy that house because you see you can give God glory by supporting your family through that house, and it'll allow you to give God glory, great choice. When you choose that bride or you choose that husband and you say, this is someone that can help me give God glory, it's a good choice. In fact, uh, as a pastor, I, I often have to make some big choices. Um, I have had a privilege of getting calls and it's always such a privilege because who am I? <laughs> I am nothing. I am a, a crack pot sharing this precious jewel. Um, but, but it's such a privilege to see, you know, where I could share God's word and, and, and how God could use me, you know, to share him. But I got to tell you, those are hard choices. <clears throat> and, and in many circumstances, uh, sometimes I pray, God, if you could just tell me what to do, that would be great. Just tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, do an Abraham go or stay or whatever you want, God. That'd be great. God's never done that. <laughs> He's never given me an audible voice, Dustin, you should go or stay. I've, I've never had that experience. Rather, he allowed me to use my mind to evaluate who I am, to evaluate what different congregations needed based on who I am. And then he encouraged me not only to give him glory, but to seek first his kingdom, knowing that everything else will work out. And I'm definitely not a perfect man, but I try to keep that in my mind. How can I seek first his kingdom, not my own, knowing that he's going to make the other stuff work out, whether it be the food that we have to eat, whether it be uh, what happens with our family. Um, so seeking first his kingdom. But this is radically different than the way of the world. I mean, when it comes to companies that try to provide things for us, they're always trying to say, you have it your way. You do you, boo. <laughs> um, and yet to be in Christ, to be a Christ follower is to say, no, you come first. You know, we're in the season of Lent and I consider Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. If Jesus wanted only what Jesus wanted for his own good, he would have never gone to the cross. And as he knew the cost of salvation, as he saw it before him, he prayed in the garden. He said, you know, if it could be possible to take this cup, let it happen. But not my will, yours be done. That's the heartbeat of every Christ follower. No longer saying, I got to do me and it's got to be about me. No, not my will, but yours be done. When it comes to big decisions, uh, sometimes I've asked that God, if you could just burn down a door, that would be great, you know, because I'm kind of dumb, you know, so help me with this decision. I don't want my will. I only want yours. Guide me. It reminds me of my first car. Can I tell you a silly story? So I, I was fascinated with Porsches uh, ever since I was a young boy. And the first car I was going to buy was a Porsche 944. Um, it was a poor man's Porsche with about uh, 50,000 miles and it cost about $4,000. And the day I had enough money, I was going to buy this 1984 Porsche 944. I prayed about it. You know, I was going to use all my money. I thought it was a good investment. It was gone. <laughs> God had burned down that door. So sometimes I praise God for answering and closing doors and opening others. But I know that it is my part to seek first his kingdom, to choose and to trust it reminds me one of the greatest decisions I made was to marry a girl named Catherine Maddock. That was her maiden name. And we got engaged actually in a church. And the reason we did that is so that after I could make this big choice in her as well, we could pray together and ask God to bless it. So the purpose is to give God glory. But I want to talk about one very specific purpose before we end. And that is reaching out to others with the gospel. At Amazing Love, we're trying to follow the Great Commission, and so we've summed it up and we've said we're here to reach the lost with the love of Christ. And so I want to ask you, how are you doing at sharing your faith? 
Now, I know for many, it's intimidating. In fact, every time I've shared the faith, it's taken some courage to do so. But right now, I think there are incredible opportunities to share the faith. You can right now share this Facebook post and others will hear of their Savior, Jesus. You can, on Sunday, share your online platform for wherever you're worshiping and, and encourage others to watch with you. Uh, if you're at home, the people who may not come to worship with you are now listening um, to what you have on broadcast. How might you be used by God to share the Savior Jesus? I remember another pastor saying, you know what my goal for life is, is that when I die, I'm going to take as many people to heaven with me. <laughs> and he knew it was the power of the gospel that would do that. But how are you doing at being an evangelist? Going out and making disciples. Share Facebook posts, put Bible passages, pray for people, share your faith. And God could use you to give him great, great glory. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me life and breath so that I could draw others to you as I just shine brightly. Lord, empower me by the Spirit to shine so bright today. Uh, so that people would finally see you through me. Lord, I pray that when I die, not only will I see you face to face, but through my confession, many others would have met you. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And if this has been helpful, again, please share on Facebook. Uh, but uh, thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.